over the last few days, we've seen a plethora of reports, forensic reports, postmortem reports, MLC, and statements including an international conspiracy linking the case of the 19-year-old girl from Hathras to everything else but her alleged rape. Before I go ahead, let me say this. Nothing I say can prove rape occurred. Rape is a legal term that only a judge, not me, not the police, not a politician can ascertain. What we can as journalists is point you towards selective leaks. These confuse facts and don't give the full picture. On September 14th, four men allegedly gang raped and strangled the woman. She's found by her mother, bleeding, unable to move. She's taken to the Bagla District Hospital in Hathras. From here, she's referred to the Jawaharlal Nehru Medical College in Aligarh without a medical legal certificate. Rules say MLC, medical legal certificate, must be done at the first place a patient is admitted, except if the case is serious, in which case explicitly mentioned that no MLC was done. Now, in this case, Bagla Hospital's referral says no MLC was issued. And that's how discrepancy number one pops up. When admitted to JN Medical Hospital in Aligarh, they say an MLC is done in Bagla. No one has seen it. Let's keep going. The victim's family claims they told the hospital about the alleged rape, but the hospital refused to conduct an exam until an FIR was filed with gang rape charges. That's problem number two. That's a violation of the law. The hospital has a duty to inform the police station after conducting the exam. On September 22nd, eight days after the incident, the charges are added. The Aligarh Hospital conducts a preliminary exam. By this time, the victim has changed, bathed, she's passed urine, stool, etc. Mind you, no forensic evidence has been collected so far. It's 22nd. That's problem number three. Her clothes from the day of the crime are not collected till 27th when news laundry went to the house uh, the chapels of the girl that she was wearing on the day the crime took place was still there. Now the Aligarh report after that preliminary rape exam also has two pages from the head of the neurosurgery. He's recommending that a magistrate be called to take the Hathras victim's dying declaration. She was so critical at that stage. Well, in that dying declaration, she clearly says about rape by four men, one of whom had attempted to rape her earlier as well. This is admissible and powerful evidence in our courts based on legal jurisprudence. The MLC report done in Aligarh is in public domain. Many, many publications, including The Wire, have it. The MLC report says there are signs of use of force. It mentions the patient's statement saying penile penetration was complete. It records healed abrasions over the back. Under the head history of the alleged assault, the examining doctor has recorded that the survivor was strangled by her dupatta, gagged while being verbally threatened that she would be killed. Let's keep going. Visceral samples are collected on the 25th. They are sent from Aligarh to Agra and a forensic report is prepared. It was sent to the government on the 3rd of October. The report is not in public domain yet. Yet, two days before that, the ADG police had access to this report and claims no rape had happened. Or, that's problem number four. He also said, the report says, no sperm was found in the victim's sample. Now I know I've done many, many videos and constantly underline this. No sperm does not equal no rape. You know that. Now samples were collected on September 25th, remember? Government guidelines say that forensic evidence can only be found up to 96 hours. So of course no sperm was found. That's problem number five. There are two quotes, a senior home ministry official telling the Telegraph that the forensic report does record two deep injuries in her vagina. The same official is also saying that the forensic report is silent on rape, but injuries suggest she was sexually assaulted. I'm just leaving that there. Let's come to September 28th. 
The girl is admitted to Delhi Saptajang Hospital. She died on 29th. There are two reports now in the public domain, a death summary and a post-mortem report. First, the death summary issued by the neuro registrar at the Vardaman Mahavir College at Saptajang. I'm quoting from it directly. In the final diagnosis, it says strangulation with cervical spine injury plus sepsis plus cardiopulmonary arrest. In the section that's called brief history, the death summary says rape and strangulation on September 14th at 9 a.m. Quote, unquote. The post-mortem report, remember done when this case was already high stakes, is far muted. The cause of death, a cervical spine injury produced by indirect blunt trauma. No mention of cardiac arrest. It does state that the marks in the neck are consistent with strangulation but did not contribute to death in this case. The post-mortem report is making no mention of rape. What it is saying, and I'm quoting, external genitalia and uterus, the hymen showing multiple old healed tears and the uterus containing blood clots. Now, three reports, one of which is not even in the public domain completely, are selectively being read and leaked. The answers and justice could have conclusively come perhaps from a second post-mortem. But that possibility was burnt away by the police in an eerie cremation at 2.30 a.m. without rituals and the consent of parents. I'll end here. We know words matter. We know identities matter. The Saptajang death summary and post-mortem report have not recorded the surname of the girl, Valmiki. It's the marker of her Dalit identity and it's actually missing from official documentation of her death. We leave it here. If you've been watching, listening, thank you for your time.